Home Secretary, thanks very much indeed. As usual, we are inviting you to take uh, to come in with some questions. You know how to go to the usual mics are around the room. Just one quick one from me, if I may, to begin with, uh, Home Secretary. Uh, you said uh, just a moment ago you'd do your level best to make sure that uh, we would uh, maintain uh, the presence on the streets of, uh, of the police. We currently have 140,000 uh, warranted police officers in England and Wales. Will we have 140,000 when your tenure of office ends? <laughs> now, John, you have been asking politicians questions like that for a very long time, and you know that in this uh, environment in which we're in, I'm not going to make any commitment on numbers, but what I am going to say to you is this. I think what the public want out there is for the police to be able to be out on the streets. I believe what pe police officers want is to be able to be freed from their desks and actually out on the streets doing the job of preventing cr crime but also catching criminals. Uh, and that's what we will be doing by freeing the police from the bureaucracy. Your police minister yesterday indicated, and I hope I'm not misquoting him here, that he would only effectively as a last resort cut back uh, numbers of warranted officers. Can you? add to that? And can you make that Look, an assurance, in fact? We, we have an absolute commitment that what we want to do, and you know, obviously we're looking at the moment at issues around savings, that obviously what we want to do is to protect frontline services, um, the services on which the public depend. But what I'm saying to you is that I think that there are ways in which we can ensure that the service is better for the public, that the people out there actually get what they want, which is to see police being able to spend more time on the streets, that the police are able to do the job that they want, um, and that's actually by taking a different approach to the bureaucracy, it's about yeah. slashing that bureaucracy to enable more time to be my, spent my on the streets. My final point before we go to come to our many questioners, um, a previous chairman of this police federation, uh, Jan, as you, Jan Berry, as you know, was appointed the bureaucracy czar. In a private moment, or in a private moment, I think she would tell you that trying to cut down that bureaucracy was like trying to stir treacle with a feather. Why can you succeed when she failed? Well, it's not about Jan failing, because ultimately decisions about the bureaucracy, um, and Jan obviously is still uh, produced a report, not all of those recommendations have been put in place yet, and uh, there's still some more work to be done. But what you need is the political will at the centre. She thought she had it too. Well, she, she did a, a good job in coming forward with the ideas. Um, what I'll say to you is, because what we're talking about is set in this context of a different approach of government. It's not just about what we want to do in the Home Office, it's about what we will be doing as a coalition government across every department. And it's that theme of increasing responsibility uh, at the sharp end of people, uh, of people generally in society actually, but increasing responsibility and trusting our professionals in the public services. That ethos runs through what we're doing and that's why I think we can do do it. I'm going to go to our friend on the microphone five down here. It tells you your answer. Any question, please? Yeah, it's Ian Leyland from Merseyside. Um, you've ruled out the Royal Commission. Okay, let's move on. But actually, this is a plea, and it's picking up on one of the themes that Paul talked about in terms of workforce modernisation and some of the failed experiments, like amalgamations of forces, which have been missed opportunities. And what we're really crying out for, we've got to take some short-term cuts, we understand that, we've got to take some big short-term measures, but we actually need some in-depth research that isn't politically based, that engages with the public, that engages with the police service, that actually then comes up with, what do you want the police service to, to deliver? How is that best structured? How is that best resourced? How is it best staffed? And how are the people who deliver the services best rewarded? Yeah. We've got to get that long-term research in place for something that's sustainable for the next five to 10 years. Okay, Nick Herbert, to the benefit of those who didn't know, Nick Herbert yesterday indicated that he didn't think a Royal Commission was worthwhile because there were far more urgent things to do, which would summarize what our gentleman was saying. Are you willing to do the kind of research uh, our friend from Merseyside indicates? Well, I, I absolutely take the point that you make. That we're, we're at, I think we're at what could be a very exciting time because I think, as I said in, towards the end of my speech, I think the coalition government with a fixed term gives us a period of time when we can be making these sorts of decisions and making these sorts of changes without the fear that actually it's all going to be upended very soon because an election is, is going to come along. Um, and yes, I think the issue about the Royal Commission is the sort of length of time that that actually takes to, 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 uh, to take place. So what I do want to do is to look at what works. I'm a pretty practical person. I think we need to look and say what is actually going to work out there rather than sitting in Whitehall coming up with ideas as has happened in the past. 
So it's, it's a qualified yes, is it? To his well, it, yes. I mean, I'm not going to say, abs I'm not quite sure how much research you're talking about and who you're thinking of doing the research and how long you intend it to, to take on. But what we want to do is find out what works, and part of that is listening to you. All right, because I'm going to move on. Because you, very quick response, sir, yes? Just come back very quickly. What you've got to get under is the smoke and mirrors. You've seen the report when we've talked about civilianisation, and Surrey have the lowest detection rate in, in the country. And then we had the Surrey Chief Constable this week defending that, saying, actually, no, we've empowered people. You will be fed all sorts of misinformation you've got to get under, and the only way to do that is through proper evidence research. That's the point. OK, let's just, let's just pursue that just very briefly with you. It's been a running theme of this conference, as you can well imagine, uh, Home Secretary, modernisation, policing on the cheap, other people like to call it, uh, civilianisation of, of the police force. And the Surrey example, which our friend quotes there, they've got you know, more, more and more civilians working for their force, their detection rate is the worst in England and Wales. Does that suggest to you that modernisation perhaps needs looking at? <laughs> well, I take the point that was made at the end there, that actually you want to look at evidence and see what, uh, what is happening. Um, and I, I would hesitate simply to draw a cause and effect from that, because I think maybe one might need to look at some uh, other issues as well. All I will say is this, I mean, it's obviously the balance between police officers and, um, and civilians, uh, civilian staff operating within any force is a matter for the, uh, for the Chief Constable in that force area. But I'm going to take on um, one of the issues that I know is, is uh, of significant concern to people in relation to the um, operation with PCSOs and working with PCSOs. And I went um, on my, actually my second day in, uh, as Home Secretary and met one of the safer neighbourhood teams, the neighbourhood policing teams in the, uh, in the Met and talked to both the officers, the warranted officers and the PCSO there about the relationship there. And I think that we do need to accept that there are benefits in having people in there who sometimes the community feel it's easier to talk to and give information to. And if it works well, it can work very well in detecting and fighting crime and catching criminals. So they're, so, they're, they're to stay? No, no revision of the plan for PSO? They're, 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 but there's an issue about making sure these things are working well. And it's, about, it's partly about those relationships, but it's also about making sure that people are doing the job that they are appropriate for um, and obviously that's, that's, I think, where some of the okay. issues arise. Never mind my questions, these are the more important ones. You, sir, on microphone too. Yes, sir. Tell us who you are. Yes, uh, Home Secretary Dave James, Devon and Cornwall Constabulary. Um, clearly, I, I'm not likely to be able to persuade you to give up the idea of elected commissioners, um, but at the moment we have a police authority which is democratically elected by the people of Devon and Cornwall. It's probably the biggest geographic force in the country, uh, and Devon is uh, a particularly large county. You have the Celtic nation of Cornwall, and you have the people of the Isles of Scilly who regard themselves as an island race. How are you going to actually have democratically elected commissioners who are going to be able to represent those disparate and diverse communities in the same way that the democratically elected police authority does at present time. I want to put it another way, Home Secretary, if it's not broke, why fix it? I, the first point to make is that you're, you're right in your assumption that you're not going to move me away from our desire to uh, put these directly in, elected individuals in, uh, in place. Um, but we do have to work through, obviously, the process of how we do that and look at issues like the, the sort of scrutiny arrangements that will be in place for those individuals. And I have every confidence. I actually believe in trusting people because you say, how can I ensure that the individual who'd be elected in Devon and Cornwall would be able to represent uh, the people across uh, what is, you know, two counties when the Isles of Scilly and a diverse range of people. Actually, it's the people who will be choosing who that individual is. Isn't there a danger, though, that that police commissioner might, through his through strategic policy, try to please the people who elected him and not, and not the whole of the community, which I think is behind the point the question is making? Well, obviously, in, in, once one is elected to any office, one is serving the, the people across the community that you are elected to serve. And I actually have faith in the people's choice of uh, who they would uh, choose as an elected individual to, to uh, be in that position. And I also have faith in the sort of people who might put themselves forward. I'm suggesting and you might, the, the you might protect is... the interests of the people, the, directly the people who would elect him rather, rather than the, the population as a whole. Well, John, they're not going to know sort of every, the name of every individual who elected them and be able to find out exactly what their view is. What they will have is a view from, their, from the community who elected them as to what policing should be. And yes, it is, I mean, it is a significant change. It is a change from this bureaucratic accountability that we've had, uh, we still have at the moment, and that we've had in the past, 
where there is uh, uh, the governance is from the Home Secretary by this bureaucratic diktat down to police forces to saying actually that accountability is at that more local level do you for accept the police that, force. Do you accept that point that I mean it's arguably better than Home, than home Secretary interfering which is the point the Home Secretary has made? I'm afraid I don't because uh, you're going to have to elect so many elected commissioners to represent those diverse communities you might as well just leave in place the police authority and I don't see, I really don't see what you're going to change but as I'm not going to change your mind I'll retake my seat. Okay, thank you very much Dean. We're going to move on to uh, our friend over here. Home I Secretary. Yourself, 